Hi guys, welcome to an English language paper one on the haunting of Hill House. So please have a look at that on Netflix. It is great for description and great for narration. If you want anything from me, catch me on Instagram at Stacey V. My website is www.stacyv.co.uk where you can subscribe or you can check out my free stuff on YouTube. Um, things we have to look at then when we are studying an English language uh, paper one or an English language paper in general, obviously, is technique. So similarly, metaphor, extended metaphor, personification. If something is repeated, is that a language device or does it become a structural device? We've got individual words and the impact of that. We might want to comment on lexical and semantic fields. And then we want to look at how the writer has structured it, structured the piece. Again, take a note of that just to um, extend your vocab in terms of analysis and this for extending your um, in-depth analysis of individual words. Read the blurb. Lots of students forget and I, I advise that you don't forget the blurb. This extract is taken from the start of the novel. In this extract, Elna Vance, the main character, arrives at Hill House for the first time. She has been invited by a doctor. You will get foreshadowing in the blurb. The fact that it's the first time she's been there, so she, it's, mis it's mysterious to her, it's strange. And second of all, there's a doctor coming. So that's going to foreshadow upcoming events. This is the paper. I would advise you to pause the video here and have a good look through it. I'm not going to read it to you. When you are look, uh, when you are looking, be conscious to look at individual words, language devices, structure. How does it begin? How does it end? Is there a link there? How do paragraphs begin and end? Is there anything particular about the lexical and semantic field? Is there anything particular about the um, punctuation used or any repetition? I'm going to take you through my observations now. So my observations as I read it the first time was this first sentence we have to comment on. No human eye can isolate the unhappy coincidence which suggests evil in the face of the house. So we've got lots in there. We've got isolation, we've got unhappiness, and then we've got this personification that gives the house an evil face. Um, evil is repeated later on as well. So I've just mentioned that there we are told that the face of the house is awake and it's watchful so again it, by bringing the house to a la, uh, to life as if it's observing other people we've got something quite untoward we've got something unsettling for me the extract begins with a disequilibrium again evil is repeated uh, change in focus is when the narrator says that uh, i should have turned back at the gate eleanor thought and again look at your main clause there I should have turned back at the gate then the pause is her is what she's thinking now what that does that main clause I should have turned back at the gate and then your punctuation it already subtly foreshadows that actually something is going to go wrong inside Hill House because why else would she have turned around uh listening to the sick voices inside her which whispered get away from here get away so now we start introducing the mentality of the main character the fact that there is a voice in her head notice that is pre-modified with the adjective sick that's telling her to leave so again we've got some supernatural presence that has uh, kind of influenced her uh, paragraph structure on its own but this is what I came so far to find, that she told herself, I can't go back. Again, we're looking at the structure of that sentence. Subordinate clause in a main clause into main clause. Interesting as well that we get, she told herself, I can't go back at the end of the sentence. And then that, again, what that leads us into is as a reader, we, we are manipulated there into thinking, well, why can't she go back? It has the house taken hold because we know it's alive because we were told at the start. Um, just jumped to, sorry, that's gone in the wrong order. We've got when she meets a woman, silently the woman stood um, and we're told about this suspicious sullenness. So why do we get suspicious? Why is the woman at the house suspicious? Probably because she doesn't want visitors in it is our initial thought. You look down at the ending there, we've got uh, you, you did see you and Mrs. Dudley. Notice that that's a stutter there, you, you. I think I'm going to cry, she thought, like a child sobbing and wailing, and then I don't like it here. The stutter there, guys, is a structural device, and it's it's presenting apprehension and nervousness, isn't it? And this idea of crying, and again, it's another one of her thoughts. We, we get a lot of the character's thoughts here, so that we get firsthand the kind of nervousness and apprehension that she feels as she stands at Hill House. And then we get this simile like a child sobbing, and wailing so absolute emotional chaos there and then 
again your structure changes for that uh that kind of speech i don't like it here with the ellipses interesting as well we know that she can't she's told her she can't go back she wishes she should have gone back and she doesn't like it the fact that that ends the piece whereas we had the personification at the start the house being alive being evil we've got this sinister tone and then when we start looking at how she doesn't like being there then we have this huge notion of cliched i know a haunted house potentially uh, read again the paragraph that begins silently the woman's to decide and list four things i'm not going to go do that with you you should be able to do that but do it just for practice question two look in detail at the first two paragraphs of the source how does the writer use language here to describe hill house and the effect of it on eleanor so again eight marks you want to be looking at single words so just some things you might want to consider i would advise that you have a go at this question there's nothing wrong with setting a timer to 12 minutes and having a go so we've got suggests evil in the face of the house so I, I mentioned that personification turned hill house into a place of despair so abstract noun despair more frightening because the face of the house seemed awake so again look at frightening which links us back to evil in our semantic field the house is so arrogant and hating never off guard can only be evil so again this idea that the house hates um ev everybody that arrives is not good for eleanor Read its great head back against the sky without concession to humanity. Now, this awful image of re rearing its great head back to me sounds animalistic. So I think we've kind of um, progressed from this sonified house to this animalistic house that stands up against the sky. It seems uncomfortable. It seems out of place. Um, again, I'm, I already done. I should turn back at the gate. Eleanor thought so you can use that in your analysis. The hands turned nervously cold so that she fumbled. Now, again, we can do cold in terms of literal cold and we can do cold in terms of emotionally cold. The house has this massive emotional impact on Eleanor, doesn't it? So much so that she starts fumbling around. And again, that is pure nervousness, isn't it? This is something about the presence of this particular building the sick voice inside her which whispered get away from here get away so you've got that repetition you've got the italics there to, to show us the voice inside of her head and again interesting that voice would be pre-modified with the adjective sick the sick voice inside her head again is this an illness that parallels the fact that the doctors arrived or is she going to turn mentally insane and or ill um because of the house again that's there for you again just to start in terms of if you're going to try this this is just the opening by utilizing personification and providing the house with a sinister persona the writer terrifies eleanor and the reader the imagery of the face being evil has connotations of something demonic and it could be argued that the house is in fact possessed by something supernatural naturally you're going to continue that on with an in-depth analysis let me know your thoughts if you do do it question three is how the text is structured to interest the reader We've got things like this, so pause the slide if you need. But my grade nine students do the following. They look for equilibrium, disequilibrium, climax, foreshadowing, and syntax, which is your word order. So again, I mentioned the disequilibrium there. It's further established when the house is, is suggested to be watchful. We have a shift here where Eleanor's thoughts come into play. I do think this is still a progression of the disequilibrium. Um, the climax for me is that where she feels like she has to get away and get away most tense moment because now I think it's foreshadowed that actually she isn't going to get away and in fact it's just going to be either trapped in the house and or the house is going to do something sinister to her where she can't turn back. Um, I've mentioned the ending so we can include that. I do think the ending is disequilibrium because I think disequilibrium is all the way through except when we get the climax. There's no moment of equilibrium here. Again, example, the writer immediately begins the extract using disequilibrium, which focuses on negative emotions, and they seem to intensify as the opening develops. Unhappy to evil to maniac. Perhaps this foreshadows the change in Elna as she visits Hill House, whilst paralleling, paralleling the house's own demonic persona. And then again, I would continue down to see where the disequilibrium progresses, then I would do climax, and then I would do foreshadowing. And what you will have is quite a, a solid grade seven to nine analysis of language. Question four. In this section of the novel, the writer has made Hill House seem disconcerting and threatening. I certainly would not enter Hill House. How far do we agree? I mean, there's absolutely ample in that, isn't there? This is the whole source as well, so we can use everything. So, um, so go back again through your analysis. 
and think about what you would comment on there. It's disconcerting and it's threatening. Well, everything in it is really, and because it's the whole sort, then we can do what do what we want with language. We can also repeat the disequilibrium, the climax from from question three. So what you've said in two and three, there's nothing wrong with using it here because it says the whole source. Um, naturally, we agree. We don't want to be entering Hill House and then we're going to analyse just pure analysis of language that shows that the that, that Hill House is um, unnerving, it is threatening, and obviously how the reader responds there. Um, question five, make a, make a voc vocabulary list that's ambitious. Think about similes, think about metaphors. I always use biblical links and Greek myths. Um, so again, when you're looking at the picture, consider how you could link that across to Greek myths or biblical links. I've just give you a door there. It's like an orange ready colour. Because it's a door, it is it is, uh, if you like, an opening to anything you want in terms of metaphor. Um, this was just a quick 10 minute video for English language paper one. Please let me know what you've written in your answers. Let me know your thoughts. Watch Hill House on Netflix because it might give you some creative ideas and a massive good luck in your studies, guys.